My name is Diane Southard, and I am currently the owner of Your DNA Guide, um, a website that I've been running for about two years now, and I help people answer questions about their genetic genealogy. I spend a lot of time lecturing and educating about the field itself in general, and then I spend a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with people just like you who are interested in genetic genealogy and who just don't know what to do now. You get your results and you kind of feel a little bit lost and wondering why did you do this again? And uh, so you come talk to me. And I have a lot of resources on my website. I write some quick guides. I write a lot of magazine articles. And I do one-on-one -on -one consultations. So it's a, it's a great place to go to find out what next. So just with any other genealogical goal that you have, um, you can't just wander into the library in Salt Lake and say, here I am, let's do genealogy, and expect to find some sort of results. It's, it's just not going to happen. That's silly. No one would do that, right? It's the same with your DNA. You can't log into the testing company's website and pull up the results page and say, feed me, answer my questions. Uh, you have to go with a specific question in mind. That's going to be the most uh, beneficial way for you to get the most out of your results. So I always recommend look at your pedigree chart. Who's the ancestor that you want to know more about? Now, this doesn't have to be a brick wall. This can just be someone that maybe your information's not that complete and you just want to know a little bit more about that person. So you choose them and then you go at the database with that in mind. So your ancestor, that person that you want to know about, has three qualities that helps you figure out a little bit more about them. They have their genetics, they have their surnames, and their locations. And all the testing companies are going to let you search those three things to help you figure out more about your ancestor. So you go to the website and you search that ancestor's surname and you find all the other people in the website that have been tested that have that same surname in their pedigree chart. And you evaluate that name and you say, okay, is this the same as mine? Is this different? And that's how you go about it until you've gathered these people around you that all have a similar research goal or interest and they might be able to help you fill in some of the blanks about that ancestor. So I think my favorite tools are ones that allow you to um, really get in and visualize what's going on in the data. So um, each testing company has their own little set of tools. Um, in Ancestry, it's the DNA circles and your new ancestor discoveries. And it really helps you see how you need the complete picture of your genealogy. You need the genetics. That's why these people are showing up on your match page. You share enough DNA that you do share a common ancestor. But then you have to bring in those other genealogical elements. You have to decide, OK, we're sharing genetics. Now what surnames are we sharing? What locations are we sharing? And you can do the same thing with family tree DNA or at 23andMe. And you're just trying to create these DNA circles, these groups of people that share these common characteristics that might be able to help you understand a little bit more about your ancestry or about your heritage. Um, I really like the uh, in common with tool um, at Family Tree DNA. I like to be able to say who else is sharing DNA with me and kind of pull people out in that way. That's a fun tool to use. Um, I really enjoy um, the the visual map features that both Ancestry and 23andMe have um, that help me picture where in the world my matches ancestors have come from and put it on a map. And I, I use Google Earth actually to map out my own family history so that I can see visually where were these people and when. Because your DNA has a time and a place. At the moment you were born, it was in that time and that place. The same is true for your ancestors. So if you know where they were and when, you can help kind of pool people around them. Okay, well, this person, this match, had an ancestor that was only 20 miles away during the same decade. That's a good match. That perks your interest. That makes you think, oh, okay, this is someone I want to investigate further. So being visual is really the key to my success. I feel like I have to have it all out in front of me. I can't think about it unless it's down on paper. So. If I could dream up anything I wanted about genetic genealogy, I think what I want more than anything is just a way to gather better. Like I'm talking about these tools that we've been using, these location and surname tools to gather people. I want to be able to do that better and I want to be able to do it with DNA a little bit more clearly. I want to be able to say that these people belong to me and they belong to me because we share a common ancestor. So I, I don't know that I could dream up um, the perfect tool, I think it's going to be a combination or a set of tools. I don't think there's going to be one magic bullet, but we're going to need just more different kinds of tools to help us do this research better. I 
I think um, you're just holding out for the inevitable. If you're waiting and you haven't been tested yet, you will <laughs> eventually. Um, there is no doubt that this is where genealogy is going. This is becoming an integral part of a regular genealogical search. This is just part of what we do. It's just as basic as searching for the census records. It's just as basic as finding birth certificates. This is what we do. This is part of the industry now, for sure.